All right, so now let's go ahead and take this next EKG here. So let's look here. What do we do? Rate. All right, so but we don't have a rhythm strip here, but how would we do it? We would obviously add all the R waves up and then multiply it by six. If we were to do it on this one, how many, again, you have a six second, you multiply it by 10. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'd be nine times, what? 10, that'd be 90 beats per minute. Okay, again, look at this one down here. We're gonna use the box method here. So we're gonna take a look here at lead three and we're gonna go with this one here. It's pretty close to the line, not exactly, but we're gonna go ahead and mark the boxes. So one box, two box, three box, four box, five boxes, six boxes. A tiny bit more than six boxes. Well again, take 300 for every one box, divide it by six boxes, that's 50 beats per minute. Hmm. That's definitely less than 60. So this means that this is bradycardic. So this is bradycardia. All right, we know that for sure. All right, so we're gonna put 50 beats per minute. So this is definitely bradycardia. All right, next thing we have to determine is the R to R interval. And again, we're gonna just look at this and some of these here where again, you have, uh, we don't have enough of a rhythm strip, but if you did, let's imagine here we had enough of a rhythm strip on this side. We take here R to R interval. We have three boxes. R to R interval here, it's about three boxes. And again, about three boxes. You don't have enough, we needed a rhythm strip here, it'd be a little bit easier because we don't have enough complexes within each one. So it's hard to be able to determine, but at this look here, it seems like it definitely is appearing to be regular. Again, how would we be certain? If we had a rhythm strip like following like lead two or three, it would definitely help us to get more QRS complexes. So it's a little difficult to say if it is regular here, but again, we're just gonna go for right now and say that it is regular. But again, it's kind of difficult to tell because we don't have enough QRS complexes to determine that. All right, next thing we gotta determine, P wave. Where do we go? Well, we have to go into lead two. Holy crap, I don't see a P wave, guys. There's no P wave here. No P wave. No P wave. Uh-oh. Okay, well, okay, there's no P wave there in two. I gotta go to AVR. So AVR, oh no, there's no P wave. There's no P wave. There's no P wave in lead two in AVR. What does that mean? That means that this is definitely not sinus. If it's not sinus, it comes down to two things. It's either some type of ectopic rhythm that's taking over. Like for example, uh, it might be a junctional. All right guys, let's pop in a heart here real quick. So we have here, again, your right atria over here. So here's the right atrium and here's the left atrium, right? We know the SA node is located with around the superior vena cava to the an entrance of that in the right atrium. Let's say that this is no longer functioning. It's not, it's not fo uh, working for some reason. Two areas can take over. The AV node can then become the pacemaker of the heart, and that's called a junctional rhythm, where it can fire impulses down into the ventricles at a rate usually between 40 to 60 beats per minute. And that's interesting because that's kind of fitting right along this range here of 50 beats per minute. Another thing that could happen is you could have an, an, an area of the actual atria, maybe in the left atrium, maybe in the right atrium, that it starts sending out action potentials on its own. It's called an ectopic focus, right? So you might have an atrial ectopic focus that takes over and it starts to generate a, a rate, but usually that rate is a little bit higher. So what I'm determining, and also another thing, is usually if it is an atrial ectopic focus, it usually gives you some type of abnormal P wave. Usually, in other words, it doesn't look it doesn't look like a normal P wave, or it might be, depending upon where it is, it might be a retrograde P wave, okay? But either way, I'm kind of leaning here towards, this is kind of right around that rate, 40 to 60 beats per minute. There's no P wave. I don't see a retrograde P wave. I don't see really an abnormal P wave. I think this is a junctional rhythm. So I think that that's definitely what this is. And again, here's something you wanna remember. Junctional rhythms, the AV nodes still can generate a retrograde P wave. So don't forget that sometimes the retrograde P wave is hidden within the QRS complex. So what I want you to remember here is based upon the rate. If the SA node is not working, either an ectopic focus can take over, but usually that rate is a little bit higher. 
or the AV node can take over and start to allow its intrinsic rate to be around 40 to 60 beats per minute. Seems to be the case. They both can have retrograde P waves though that can be hidden within the QRS complexes. So I'm leaning to this being junctional so far. Is there a QRS complex for every P wave? Well, again, there's no P wave. So in this case, I think that there might be some type of AV disassociation of some form, okay? In other words, the SA node isn't firing, it's not going to the AV node. The AV node might be the one, in this case, generating the action potentials. QRS complexes, do I see any wide QRS complexes? Well, if I'm looking here, I can kind of start here, and I can go to about here. In some areas, there might be some wide QRS complexes, and that's something you want to remember. Sometimes wide, sometimes when you do have a wide QRS complex in certain leads, this could be due to a junctional rhythm. So junctional rhythms can actually cause wide QRS complexes. So I'm definitely leaning to a junctional rhythm here. Why? One reason, it's within the, that inherent rate. So that's one reason. I'd say one reason why I'm leaning to junctional rhythm is it's within between 40 to 60. What's another one? It's not sinus. In other words, there's no P wave upright in lead two, it's not inverted in AVR. And again, there could be a retrograde P wave that could be hidden within the QRS complex. And that could be another reason of why it's a little wide QRS. There is AV disassociation because there's no P wave, you can't have a P wave for every QRS wave. And the QRS complex is wide in certain leads. That definitely helps me to believe that this is a junctional rhythm. So I'm definitely gonna go with saying that this is a junctional rhythm and what is the reason for a junctional rhythm? It's usually some type of damage to the SA node that it no longer is becoming the pacemaker of the heart and the AV node has to take over, okay? So that's going to be this EKG. Now, this next EKG here is a little interesting, okay? So we talked about junctional rhythm, how basically that's when the AV, AV node takes over because the SA node is no longer firing. So if you guys remember, we have the SA node here in the top, top part of the right atrium then we have the AV node, right? And he basically is going to receive stimulus from the SA node and send these action potentials down through the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch. And then you have these Purkinje fibers that take over, all right? Now, we said that junctional rhythm was when the SA node failed and then the AV node takes over. Well, what happens if the AV node starts to fail or the action potentials is not being conducted down into the ventricles? Well, guess who starts to take over when the AV node isn't working? And the ventricles have to start beating at their own rhythm. These little guys here are Purkinje system. So now, remember this. The Purkinje fibers, they fire at a rate around approximately 20 to 40 beats per minute okay so again if you remember the order it goes SA node again these guys fire at approximately anywhere from 60 to 80 beats per minute then we go to the AV node and this dude is you know tacking away at around 40 to 60 beats per minute and then we go to the Purkinje system and the Purkinje system again remember that this one is going to be around 20 to 40 beats per minute sometimes you might hear and there's a specific name for this rhythm here. And we call this an idioventricular rhythm, okay? So we're gonna get into uh, basically how to do all this stuff. So you guys should be pretty good now by determining the rate. Remember, we can do it a couple ways. Remember that this is a six second rhythm strip, so we multiply the number of R waves by 10. How many is there? One, two, three, four. 4 times 10 is 40 beats per minute. Okay, so that's how we can get 40 beats per minute, right? But remember the other way that we talked about. Go from the R wave, right, where it kind of lands close to this point. It's a little bit after that. And then go to the next R wave. So we're just going to count the boxes and we're going to approximate this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's about 8 boxes. Well, remember, 1 box is 300 beats per minute. So I take 300 divided by eight, and that's gonna be about 38 beats per minute, around, around that, okay? So it's pretty darn close when you compare these two. This one's 40 beats per minute using the multiply by 10, and this is going to be about 38 beats per minute, basically divided by the number of boxes, taking 300 divided by the total number of boxes from R wave to R wave, boom. 
For this one, we're just gonna go with 40 beats per minute. Now what's interesting is that's falling right around the range of the Purkinje system or the idioventricular rhythm, right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take into consideration, let's determine the rhythm of this. How do we do that? R to R interval. So is the R to R interval about eight boxes between each one? Well, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's about eight there, yeah. What about from this one to this one? So we'll count here, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's just a little bit more. Again, this one's about a half of that one, about a half of that one. So technically, yes, it's about eight, maybe a tiny bit over eight. So yeah, I'm gonna say that the R to R intervals are pretty much the same from each one. So therefore, this is regular. Okay, what about the P wave? Do we see a P wave in this? Now normally, how do we determine if it's sinus? It has to be upright in lead two, inverted in AVR. This is a rhythm strip, okay? But first off, we're looking at lead two. So we should see a P wave upright in this. Look for the P wave. Oh, wow, there's no P wave before my QRS complex. No P wave before my QRS complex. No P wave. What does that mean? That means that the SA node is not firing. It is not firing. Because remember, in order for us to get a P wave, even if it's an ectopic or abnormally appearing P wave, the SA node has to fire, an ectopic area has to fire. And even if the AV node fires, usually there can be a retrograde P wave, maybe hidden in the QRS complex. But no matter what, there's no P wave here, okay? It may be somewhere in this uh, QRS complex. It depends, but it's not there. All right, so no P wave. All right. All right, so again, P to every, uh, so is there a QRS for every P wave? Well, we know that there's no P wave. And if there is a P wave and it's hidden within the QRS complex, again, we can't assume that. So we know that because there is no P for every QRS, there is AV dissociation, okay? So there's no connection, no strong connection between the atria and the ventricles, in other words, okay? Now, next thing we do is look at the QRS complex. Is it wide, is it narrow? Okay, here's gonna be where I start my QRS complex, and it's gonna be about here where it ends, because then this is just your ST, segment and T wave basically. This is kind of a deviation here, all this stuff. So basically you can say here, about there, this is gonna be my QRS complex. So if I count the boxes, there is one box, two box, three box, I'm already above it, yeah. So I got four boxes already, just kind of like eyeballing that, that's definitely, and again, remember I told you guys, you're gonna. it's gonna be so obvious when this is a wide QRS complex. This is definitely wide, wide, QRS complex. And this should make sense. And the reason why is there's these Purkinje fibers are having to fire. And because they're firing, it's gonna move a little bit slower. So there's gonna be some aberrancy there. Okay, it's just like whenever ectopic foci, so again, we'll talk about PVCs. Whenever you have these little areas of irritability due to hypoxia, electrolyte abnormalities, increased sympathetic nervous system activity, they basically can fire and send these action potentials throughout the ventricles. And they look really odd, kind of like these guys here, okay? So PVCs, they do look somewhat similar to this because they're kind of the same thing. Except from now on, this rhythm is what you're gonna see for the rest of the EKG. Sometimes it can accelerate. You might see other EKGs where they have an accelerated idioventricular rhythm. Um, it might be a little bit higher than 20 to 40 beats per minute. Maybe it might be going anywhere from 40 to 50, 40 to 60. Okay, so that is how we determine basically an idioventricular rhythm. And all that is, is that the ACE SA node is no longer working. The AV node is no longer working or they're not conducting these potentials down to the ventricle properly. And the Purkinje system is now the new pacemaker of the heart. Setting a rhythm around 20 to 40 beats per minute, which is called our idioventricular rhythm. All right, guys, so that pretty much concludes this video on junctional rhythms as well as idioventricular rhythms. I hope it made sense. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I hope you learned a lot. If you guys did, hit that like button, comment down in the comment section. Please subscribe. Also, go down in our description box. In there, you'll find links to our Facebook, our Instagram, even our Patreon account. If you guys want to donate even a dollar, we would truly appreciate it. It helps us to continue to make videos for you guys enjoy. All right, engineers, as always, until next time.